Are you glad to be in church on this Vision Sunday? Are you excited about this morning? Why don't we all just lift our voices and give our praise and thanks to our Heavenly Father. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we thank you. We've got so much to be thankful for, Lord. Thank you for health and strength. Thank you, Lord, for meeting every need. Thank you for always taking care of us. You've been so good. You've been so wonderful. And we praise, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Let's make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord.
bless you, Lord. We worship you. Oh, we give you the honor and the glory. All of our worship and our praise. We worship. Let's stay here for a second. We lift our voices and we worship you, Jesus. We give you the praise. So thankful oh, to the King, to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be all honor and glory forever and ever. To the King, eternal, immortal, invisible. and worship to you for you are the only God creator of the heavens and the earth the giver of life and to the only redeemer savior Jesus king of kings and lord of lords we give you glory oh everybody say I give you glory 
I give you glory, Lord. I, I honor you. I worship you. I praise you. I give thanks to you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The enemy is always trying to steal and kill and destroy. But greater is he who's in us and for us and with us than he that's against us. So if you've been dealing with something, got pain in your body, pain in your mind, in your emotions, the healer is in the house. Hallelujah. Praise God. So just lift your hands up real high. It's already been bought and paid for. It's already been given. All you got to do is believe you receive. Said out loud, I receive healing from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I receive peace. Peace that passes understanding. Keeping my heart and my mind. I receive joy that is my strength in the Lord. I receive grace and help in the time of need and I thank you for it, Lord. Oh, just lift up your hands and say, thank you, Lord. I receive, I believe, I lay hold I take it now Oh, I believe I receive Healing Deliverance Restoration Strength Healing Help Thank you, Lord I receive Lift your hands and thank the Lord. Lord, you're my healer. You're my strength. You're my deliverer. You're my provider, protector. Everything I need. Thank you, Lord. I receive. Oh, Lord, we thank you as we uh, observe another Vision Sunday. It is you who have kept us from last year till now and have brought many good things to pass in our life. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Our great God, our good God, our glorious God. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you thankful for... How many believe if it hadn't been for the Lord, you, you wouldn't have made it another year? You, but He's kept us. He sustained us until this present hour and the one who has brought us this far. What do you think? He can take us the rest of the way. Hallelujah. Somebody say all the way. I'm going all the way. 
with God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Smile at somebody close by. Let them know they're around friendly people, nice people. And say, good to see you. Good to be in church with you. Bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. everyone this morning. Yes, Vision Sunday. Yes, amen. Well, if you don't know about that, you'll get to hear about it and get to experience it today. It's a great day here in, for Faith Life family and family online. Also, welcome everyone. Do we have any first-time visitors with us this morning? It's your first time here, first time for Vision Sunday. Yay. Welcome, welcome. Well, we're so glad you joined us. Welcome online. Welcome all our family in Sarasota. We are so glad that you have joined us. It's an exciting day. Yes, and we know you bring your faith out there too. It's a good, good day. Well, Branson, we, we've had some departures. Um, Richard Caldwell went home to be with the Lord on February 9th. I didn't know if we had, oh yeah, we got pictures. And his wife, uh, Cindy, attended here in Branson. They had moved to Kansas. Their daughters, Hannah and Sarah, they live here in Branson. So be sure to love on them. If you see two young ladies that look identical, that would be them. <laughs> yes, when Dave and I see them, we just go, hi, Hannah, Sarah, because we don't know. We can't tell them apart. But, so be sure and love on them. They're precious. And then also, uh, the Pledger family, Jennifer Pledger's parents actually went home to be with the Lord, both of them. Uh, her mom went home, Helen, in Jan uh, January 25th, and her dad, Mickey, on February 13th. And uh, we, we love the Pledgers. Their whole family and their kids are here, so be sure and, and love on all of them when you see a Mr. Gary and all the kids. Yes. Well, did you celebrate any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Coming up, and am I here? Ah, oh, 42. And you're actually our Valentine's Day. Yes, it's a big month. Yes, ah, oh, 22. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. 20. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. See, we got more birthdays. Happy anniversary, Thir 13. Is that right? It's a little dark back there, but happy anniversary. <laughs> Wonderful. 13 again. Hey, <laughs> happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Did I see John? Oh, no. Y'all didn't have a sign today. How many? Eight. Oh, and your sweet baby, too. Oh, happy anniversary. Happy birthday. 46, happy anniversary. Yes, happy birthday. Yep, happy birthday. Thank you for the help, I appreciate it. It gets where the lights are so bright and then it gets dark. Hi, is that a birthday back there? <laughs> They're waving. Okay, well let's take a look at Sarah. Oh, happy, is it birthdays? Or, happy birthday. Oh, she's waving her phone light at me. I need all the help I can get. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's take a look at Sarasota. See if there's some celebrating going on. Oh, there's a birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Another birthday's back there in the corner. Anniversary 35. Happy anniversary. Congratulations. Ah, sweet family. Hi, Miss Phyllis. <laughs> oh, happy birthday back there. I see. Happy birthday way in the back. Oh, anniversary. How many? One? Congratulations. Oh, first of many. There you go. Oh, happy anniversary. How many? 29? 
Oh, this girl is sharp. There we go. Well, happy birthday, happy anniversary, everybody. Sweet. Well, you know what to do. Eat cake, whatever, whatever, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever you like to eat, celebrate big. <laughs> Yeah, I think she picked up that last one in the spirit <laughs> by revelation. So you're getting good at this, Kim. <laughs> well, aren't we uh, thankful for all the Lord has done for us? And like we said, brought us uh, through uh, another year. Today is Vision Sunday. If you're visiting with us, yeah, amen. It's a good day, great day. Uh, you came on what is for us a very special Sunday. Uh, it will be different from uh, our usual Sunday. Uh, all our Sundays are good. Yeah. But, <laughs> and all our services are good. But uh, this is something we, we, we go over what uh, has some things that have happened in the previous year. And then we, uh, we write down um, on our vision uh, three main things that we're believing for, what we want to, how we want to put the kingdom of God first, and then also our debts and obligations that we want to pay off and fulfill, and then also, if money was no object, what we would like to have or do for ourselves or other people. And so if you, if that's all brand new to you, and um, you'd like to join us, well, during the course of the next few minutes, you can uh, write something down. And you don't have to put it all down right now. And in fact, you don't want to just stick something on there. But you can start with some things. And then as the Lord shows you, you can add to it and, and develop it. But um, uh, the scripture says you have not because you didn't ask. And, he, and even you can ask, but ask amiss. So you want to uh, not just say, well, I'm just leaving it up to God. Well, you can't leave up to God what he left up to you. It doesn't work. And so that's why a lot of people go year after year, decade after decade, and not receiving what they should be because it's not all up to God. We, we have a part of this. Well, it's offering time right now, and amen. And so uh, something I want to mention to you, it ties in with what we're doing today, but go to um, uh, James, if you would. James, the first chapter, we use this uh, phrase a lot around here. And uh, about being a doer of the word. And this is the passage of scripture that that comes from. James 1. James 1. Verse 22. James 1. 22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. So obviously, you can hear the word, and even understand it. And even get excited about it and fail to do it, fail to implement it, fail to put it into practice. And the result of that is what? Self-deception. You, you deceive yourself. Because uh, what, and it, man, this has happened so many times. Just because you heard something and know something doesn't mean you're doing anything. But there, there can, you can get into a delusion that, oh, I've known that, you know, for uh, 20 years. Yeah, but what did you do with it? Sure. Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't do anything. I, I heard it and agreed and said amen. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing, but this is happening all over the body of Christ. And then as years go by, people say, wonder why nothing's happening on this. Well, you never did it. And so just because you know the answer, you, you think that's the end of it. Uh, but you must be a doer. You must act on it. The only people who get results are the doers. Now keep reading here. He said, if any be a hearer of the word... And not a doer, he's like a man beholding his natural face or in a glass, or we'd say a mirror. Keep going. He beholds himself in the mirror, but goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man that he was. 
Now, this is exactly what we just got through describing. You heard it. You knew it. You got excited about it. But you went away and forgot about it and did nothing with it and no changes. It's just like, you know, you can, you can stare in the mirror for 30 minutes while you get ready or something, but you turn away and leave where well, you're not thinking about what you saw in the mirror uh, necessarily the rest of the day. Right. Well, you can see things so clearly uh, from the Word of God and by the Spirit of God, and He can show you answers and direction, but you must act on it or the enemy will rob you. If you say, well, I, yeah, I'm, I, I, I've, I've actually had people more than once that came to us for help. And I mean, what they're talking about was easy. It's already answered in the word. We're already told what to do. And so I said, well, the scripture says this and, and this is it. And, and so they, they looked at me and said, well, I'm going to pray about that. <laughs> How many time to pray about it? Right. It said do this and you asked, huh? Right. Now you're laughing, but this happens over and over again, and procrastination of a few days turns into 20 years, and people, you know, imagine, well, yeah, but I know that, yeah, but you didn't do it. You didn't do anything with it. Say it out loud, you must be, not just a hearer, not just a knower, not just a note taker, or a verse quoter. You must be, you have to be a doer of the word of God. Do you believe that? That's what the scripture says. Keep reading, it goes on. He said, uh, whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty. Now that is the word of God. That is the revelation of redemption because it is the truth that does what? liberate you or makes you free. This is, he's talking about the word of truth, the word of God. But if you look into it and do what? You don't forget it, but you continue. You, you keep it, you stay with it. He being not a forgetful hearer, but what? A doer, a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed Read the rest of the phrase. In his deed, or other translations say, in his doing. It's a continuation of the, the word do. Uh, if you're not a forgetful hearer, but you do the thing, you will be blessed in what you did. Say it out loud, blessed, blessed. in the doing. doing. See, so not, not just blessed in the talking about it. Not just the blessed in the hearing, but when does the blessing manifest? When you do it. Not just when you heard about it, but when you did it. When you, because if you don't believe it enough to act on it, you didn't really believe it. You weren't fully persuaded if you're waiting on something else. And so really, you know, every time we hear the word of God, Something should change. Yes. Is that right? Yes, Every time we hear the word of God and the anointing is there, bringing light, bringing revelation, we shouldn't just go, whew, that was a good word. That was a good message. Got another one? Next? <laughs> now you're laughing, but we live in the entertainment information age. And people are so used to being entertained, watching, listening, and doing nothing with it. As soon as that's over, what do they want? Another one, please. Hmm? Something else to see, to hear, to watch. And just endless entertainment, uh, gathering information, but no change, no doing, no implementing. It's a giant problem. But you can't control everybody else, but you can make a decision about yourself. Amen. Can you? Yes. And so if we really want to experience, they said this person will be blessed in their doing. If we want to experience the fullness of the blessing, I'm going to be talking about this a little bit more. We must be doers. 
When we hear the word of God, we see it. We don't just forget it and go home and continue like before. We see how do I put this into practice? What needs to change? Do I need to stop this, start this, less of this, more of this, a change in this? If there's light and revelation, there should be changes. Is that right? In our life, every day, every night, there should be changes. Walking in the light of what we have. He said, uh, this person will be blessed in their doing. Now, go to uh, 1 Corinthians, if you would, the 16th chapter. And part of our, our vision today, this is how Phyllis and I have operated personally. 1 Corinthians 16, we're going to, uh, for decades now and how our ministries have operated. We were in the ministry for 20 years before uh, there was a church, uh, Faith Life Church, this one or Sarasota. And we've been practicing this for decades and it is working. It it has produced, uh, did you hear the word practice? What am I talking about? Doing something on this. And the number one thing, there are three items on our vision list, or three categories, I should say, three categories on our vision list. And the first one, do you know what that is? The kingdom. Put up Matthew 6.33. It's based on this, Matthew 6.33. Jesus said, in fact, back up to verse uh, Matthew 6.32. Can we find that? Matthew 6.32 he, he talked about the previous verses were what you eat, what you drink, uh, what you wear, uh, what we'd call the necessities and things of life. He said, after all these things the Gentiles seek, your heavenly Father knows you have need of all these things. He didn't say you don't need them. He said, God knows you do need them. Say that out loud. God knows, God knows. I need things. I need things. <laughs> Is that right? Is that what he says? Well, verse 33, though, is how you get them from him, how you get them from him. But do what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. He just got through saying he knew you needed these things. All these things would be added to you if what? If you don't seek the things. But you seek him. Hmm? You don't seek the things, but you seek him. Now, you'll be tempted to seek the things, especially when you're in need. You go, yeah, but I need this and I got to get this. And, And so you'll be tempted to ignore God and put God's things last or never. And you're you're busy with your life. But that means you will struggle perpetually and you will come up short again and again because you're ignoring and violating the first priority and principle of God prospering you and God meeting your needs, which is what? You seek him and his things first. Now we're talking about being a doer, not just a a talker and a hearer. How do you do that? How do you put his things first? Well, when it's time to go to church, huh? You can go fishing or golfing or sleep in. Huh? Ain't nothing wrong with fishing. Golfing, but why you got to do it the same time as the service? Why is that the only time you can go? Is that right? Hmm? Okay, the church needs some new carpet. Your house needs carpet. What do we do? That's, that's a weak response, man. It's like you're good. See? Not a doer. Not a doer. People don't live this. They're like, well, I, you know, I'll pray for them. (laughs) 
You need a new car. Yes. The missionary needs a new truck. Missionary. What do we do? Missionary. Oh, you know the right answer. Yeah. Sitting up here in church. <laughs> but do you practice this? Do you do this? The vast majority of church going people do not do this. They don't do this. They nod their head and agree with it, but come Monday, come pay time, that's not how it works. And I'm, t I'm telling you what the Lord told me. Back, uh, it must be, you know, 35, 40 years ago, uh, it was 40 years or so ago, uh, Phyllis and I were first out, out, starting out in the ministry, and we had learned a few things, but we were struggling financially, struggling. We got behind. And you know, when you're not, when you're barely making it and you get behind, right. how do you catch up? I mean, you just, right? You know, when you're half a nostril above water, it don't take much to drown you. Is that right? Just a, a little bitty wave <laughs> will put you. <laughs> we, that's where we were. And, and at one point, I, I came in after work. Nobody was in the house. I fell across the bed and, and, I, and wept. I said, Lord, this is not right. You know, because financial pressure is pressure, yes. right? Yes. You know you owe people. You know you're behind. You, you talk about no fun. A lot of uh, marriage relationships, this is a part of what destroys them, yes. is the pressure. And I fell across the bed and I said, Lord, I know this lack of, this financial pressure, this being behind, this is not you. I know enough to know that. This is not your will. I had learned enough to know that. I said, so Lord, it's not you failing me or coming short somehow. It's us. Got to be us. So please help me. Show me whatever I need to see. Please help us. Now, I didn't see it all laying across the bed that night, but right away, just the next few days, the Lord took me. To, I won't go through all of it, but he took me to Haggai and dealt with me, read it. Just two little short chapters there. Read it, read it. I read it. He dealt with me, read it again, read it again. And finally, I wrote up above the title, Matthew 6, And I went back to this passage and, and the Lord spoke to my heart. I don't mean to hurt a voice, but he said, Keith, you like so many of my people, you know this, but you're not doing it. We're already in the ministry. But it doesn't matter, you know, who you are, what you are. If you're not doing it, you're not doing it. He said, you, like so many of my people, he said, you know this. But you're not doing it. He said, so many of my people, you know, when they get paid, when they get some kind of money, they think about their rent, their house payment, their insurance, uh, school stuff and, and clothes for the kids. And the list goes on and go out to eat and, and this and that. And then uh, uh, Sunday morning comes along and if they go to church, they check and see if they have anything they can give, what they can afford to give. His things are last. Last. And so they're violating the first principle of prosperity. The kingdom is not first. We saw it. And Phyllis and I sat down and talked about it. And we had kind of, sort of tithed when we could, which means you're not. <laughs> and we had, uh, you know, went in debt for a new car and uh, then realized we didn't have much to, to give. Yes, sir. How many understand you, you should make that... Uh, decision before you go into debt right? how's that going to affect my giving but see that just shows it's not a priority to you kingdom is not first do you know why I'm talking about this I want you blessed I want to see you prosper in this year I want to see you come out of debt I want to see you get in better shape than you've ever been in and I know what it takes you got to quit playing church. Right? And it's not enough to just nod your head and say amen when you hear some of these things. Tell me what's got to happen. What's got to happen? You've got to be a doer. You've got to implement these things and do them. Look in 1 Corinthians 16. This is something that we implemented immediately. 
1 Corinthians 16, 1 says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, which was an offering, as I've given order to the churches in Galatia, even so do ye. So this is something the Spirit of God through Paul directed apparently all of his churches to do. On the first of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come. This is New Testament and this is a matter of putting things first. Notice that word first. First. So what we saw is that we need to separate God's money from ours. Hmm? Now, Phyllis and I are overseers of the churches and ministry. And how many think we are to separate God's money from ours? Huh? Would it be all right to take some building funds, us, and go buy a new car with it? Are you sure? Huh? People look at you and go, you better not. <laughs> well, what about you? Huh? If you don't apply the same thing to yourself, you're a hypocrite. What about you? Is it okay for you to take God's money and spend it on yourself? Well, is any of your money his money? Huh? I heard people say all of it. Then, then why do you spend any of it? It's not true that all of it's his. He never said all of it was his. You see why we're talking about these things? No, the tenth part has always been his. Before there was law, before there was Moses, before any of that, Abraham tithed when he had no commandment to do so. He's our example of faith. Hebrews talks about it. We have a book called Tithing Today. If you're interested, it's online, it's free, it won't cost you anything. But you need to, you need to answer this. You remember the Lord said uh, when they tried to tempt him and, and, and said, should we pay taxes or not? He said, give to God what is God's and give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Well, uh, the U.S. government, do they have a portion they think is theirs? Yes. Huh? <laughs> Does it matter if you agree with them or not? They still <laughs> insist that it is theirs. Is that right? <laughs> well, does God have a portion that's his? Yes. People say, well, no, not under the new covenant. All that's passed away. Really? Has faith passed away? Has honoring God passed away? How do you put him first? How do you do it? No, again, if, you're, if you haven't studied these things, uh, get our book. Go through, look at the verses, examine it. I'm not telling you a theory, I'm telling you what we do. Yes. Phyllis and I are tithers and givers. These churches, this church you're sitting in is a tithing plus church. Sarasota's tithing, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Why am I talking about it? Because if you don't do it, huh? If you go, hmm, you know, that's interesting. Maybe I'll think about that. Maybe I'll get that little book and, and look at it. Uh, if you don't get more serious than that, it'll be 2024 before you know it. And you'll be in worse shape next year than you are now. And you'll wonder why, but you're not a doer. So what we did is uh, he said, you know, lay by you in store. And this was, this was talking about weekly. And first, do it first. And so what we did, we actually opened a separate account. And we took off the tithe, 10%, plus an offering. Everything above the tithe, that's our money that he gave us. If it's not yours, you can't give him anything. If it's already his, you didn't give him anything. If he gave it to you, then it's yours. Right? 
And so uh, a, a tithe plus an offering would be maybe at least 11%. And so uh, actually this church started off in 2004 at 15%. And last year we did 41%. <laughs> and everything's paid for we're blessed we've been giving big to other folks how do you argue with that hallelujah did you hear I said we started did you hear I said we started with 15% Years ago, Phyllis and I started personally with 12%, 12. And so if you add even 1% every year, and that's what it, see, this church is 20 years old now. And so that's how it, it accumulates. It adds up. But can it get too big for God? So we'd take, when we got paid, uh, money came in before we paid a bill before we did anything else. We take that 12% right off the top, separate it. Now that's God's money. That's not our money. We, can't, we don't dip into that when we need it. That's not our money. That's his money. That goes to his things. Goes to his church, his ministries. Now we're, we're different than some people and they just need to follow their conscience but we don't say that you have to send all your tithes to us if you go to this church. We don't say that. We say you should tithe to God. But before you'll have it to give, you gotta separate it from yours. You gotta be consistent. And so the reason we have substantial amounts to give is because every offering that comes in last year we, take, we took that 41% yes, off the top, set it aside, and so that when these projects like that missionary airplane came up and these other things, and the storm down there, uh, Ian, uh, we had the money, the churches had the money to send 40 tractor trailer loads uh, of relief we, the churches had the money to send hundreds of thousands of dollars for that missionary project. And why? Because it's there. You had it to give. But why did you have it to give? Because every week you, you, you set it aside. You, you lay by in store. Is that scriptural? Did I just read a verse? Yes, sir. And you got to do it. You, you got to make a commitment to do it or you won't do it. You'll rock along. Well, I'm going to think about that sometime, pray about that sometime. No, you're not. No, you're not. You'll put it off and you won't do it. And then you won't. Remember the scripture said, the person that does it, they will be blessed in the doing. The blessing is in the doing. Is that all right? Get serious about this. This is not about you supporting this church. Hmm. You may be visiting, but this is about honoring God, putting him first. And the reason folks don't have it to give is because they didn't make the commitment to set it aside to start with. It accumulates. And you're then, you, you see, you start doing this. Uh, things will come up and the Lord will prompt you. That's his thing. He wants you to get involved in that. And you'll have resources you never had before. And you'll be so excited, you'll, you'll enjoy it so much. And then the harvest, yeah. Yeah. the blessing, the harvest just keeps coming. Is that okay? <laughs> Why am I talking to you about this? I want to see you. Phyllis wants to see you. Our staff wants to see you. Prosper. And be in health. Yes. Even as your soul yes. prospers. We want to see you do well. Yes. And excel. Yes. And rise above where you are. Yes. And get free. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And be used of the Lord. Yes. To do things for other people. Yes. 
and the gospel beyond what you ever thought you'd be able to do. The world, the church, is full of talkers. Huh? Full of talkers. But how about us be doers? Come on, somebody say it out loud. I am, by the grace of God, a doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer of the word of God. And I'll be blessed in my doing. Hallelujah. It is written. It is written. Well, let me give you the good reports. Put up on the screen, if you would, the, uh, the Go Supply this week. These are our outreaches. Uh, a little over half to one. We've had over that in times past. We're in good shape. This covers all of our travels, air travel, ground travel. When we, anywhere we go, it costs people nothing for us to come to them because you and our partners have sent us. And if you sent us, you got a part of everything that happened there. Everybody, anybody that got saved or got back to God, is that right? How can they go unless they be sent? The scripture said. Also, the word supply, this covers all of our materials. <laughs> it was a strong week in the word supply. <laughs> uh, all of our materials, all of our downloads, all of our printed materials, music, I mean, books, everything we have. And I mean, yes, there's thousands of hours, right, uh, of ministry uh, is available to anybody anywhere in the world at no charge, at no cost. Well, it costs a lot to produce it and send it out. How can you do that? Because of the word supply. For instance, this week, for every dollar we spent, we had $7 come in. You can do that from now on, is that right? And just grow and grow. So the word supply is well supplied. And, you know, if you helped make that happen, what should you expect? Your supply, whatever that is, to be well supplied. Every seed produces after its own kind. What else is going on? You know, we had the uh, project in... Um, uh, greater faith how many thought that went good the Lord helped us on that oh, man I'm so thankful and, and what this is is this is not for ourselves. this is sowing outside of ourselves to Living Word Church and Ministries up in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota Mac and Lynn Hammond and their ministry they are in the process of starting new churches down in Central and South America they've already started two and they they uh, are believing for a, a machine that can take a team and all that. So we released faith for three million to come in to, to help uh, help pay for that. And we are already at what, one and three quarters? So uh, just about. And how many believe the rest of it's coming in? So we call that done. And uh, I got a good testimony. Actually, I'm trying to get ahead of myself, but I'll read to you later on about what happened during that meeting. But uh, uh, ushers, would you wait on the people? If you want to get involved in the offering this morning, I hope you're not in a big rush today. This is a special day. And, um, you know, you get extra messages. <laughs> but is it worth talking about? Yes. You know, a lot of times people have questions. They go, why isn't this happening? Well, there's reasons why. There's reasons why things are not happening and you got to watch about hearing it and not doing something with it. Um, make that a check. Make it out to FLC. That's Faith Life Church. FLC. Online, there's a button you can click on. It says sewing. Text to give is on the screen. If you want something to go to the Go Supply or Word Supply, designate it. Um, if you want something to go to the... Um, uh, project from Greater Faith, we're calling that Next Phase. Next Phase. Um, that's the Hammond aircraft. Anything you designate will go to that. And that's going outside our walls to their ministry. And if you don't designate it, that's good too. It'll go to the general operations of the church. And all the non designated funds, like we said, a big portion of that 
goes to other people outside our, our walls, including in our tithes and offerings. Thank you, Lord. Need an envelope? Raise your hand real high for cash giving, credit card giving. When you're ready, you can stand. And if you're writing, take your time. Finish writing. Then stand. Whether you're giving or not, just stand and worship the Lord with us. If you'd like to have something to give, but you don't, the scripture says that God ministers seed to the sower. So ask him for some seed to sow. Watch how quickly it comes in. But now when it comes in, don't eat it. Plan it. Hold up your offering. Hold up your hand. Said out loud, Father God, you are my source. Unlimited. Unfailing. Because of your goodness and faithfulness, I do not want. I do not lack for any good thing. But we always have abundance and plenty to give. Thank you for increasing us more and more, us and our children, for blessing us big and making us a big blessing to a lot of people, to your glory. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you and Phyllis and I as your under shepherds, as the people bring these things to you, we speak over them and we say, be increased, be enlarged, be empowered, be enabled to come up higher and reach further in every good thing. We bless you in the name of the head of the church, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. I receive it. What's going on in the Faith Life family? We're getting our buildings, our lands, our houses, our vehicles, and our equipment. See, the Lord said he knows you have need of all these things. So we're just agreeing with him and laying hold of them by faith. So somebody say, I'm getting them. What else is going on? All of our debts are being reduced and Eliminated. Sit out loud. I claim extra coming in. I'm paying off everything quickly. So the Lord's bringing us into the best shape of our lives thus far. Uh, the less interest you're paying, the more you have to give. What else is going on? God's bringing into my hands seed, even some great big whopper chunk seed. And we'll sow it where he shows us. Your sowing is your future. You're setting things in motion for your future. And whether it's a small seed or a big seed, uh, it's something for God to bless and multiply. You know, a thousand times nothing is what? Nothing. You got to give him something to multiply, something to bless. And that's what's happening right now. Ushers, you can wait on the people. You can be seated.
You got any blessings to count? The Bible said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So there's more than one, right? Thank God for not going to hell. That's a big benefit. But he didn't say for the benefit, for all his benefits. There are many, many benefits. Well, Father, all of us join together here and in Sarasota and everybody joining us online. We ask you, Lord, to help us to focus on what you'd have us to focus on. Think right. Give you the honor and the praise and the glory and thanks as we ought, as we should. And direct us as to the way forward, the path of the righteous that grows brighter and brighter. Hallelujah. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can be seated. Vision Sunday. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, go with me, if you would, to Romans, the 15th chapter. I want to share a few more scriptures with you. Can you get too many scriptures? You can't overdose on them. Um, something the Lord is quickening to me last night relative to this is about the blessing, his blessing, and that that is a big part of what we are, would be giving thanks for, and that is a big part of what we are releasing faith and asking for going forward, because it is his blessing that causes things to change. Um, I'll tell you what, let's, let's do it like this. Just put, put, you hold that place. Put up on the screen for us, please, Proverbs 10.22. Proverbs 10.22. It says, the blessing of the Lord. What does it do? What does it do? Yeah, but rich is a four-letter word. <laughs> It's four letters. Is it a bad word? No. Well, you would think so yeah. to hear some folks talk. Yeah. Right. You would think that's just, you know, that's a bad word. No, rich was God's idea. Yes. That's right. Amen. You will find no poverty in heaven. That's right. Thank you. Right. You will find no bad section no. of heaven. <laughs> There's no bad part of the heavenly city. Huh? That they'll say, hey, don't, don't go down there after dark. I'm telling you, you don't. <laughs> There's nobody going hungry. Huh? In fact, no, no sorrow. No crying, no dying, no pain. Oh, somebody say, thank God. We, we, we just got to make it down here a few more days and then we're done with that forever. We'll never have to deal with it again. But the thing that makes things not only tolerable, but enjoyable down here right now is the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. Now notice that word make. Makes. This is empowerment. This is enablement. The church has been really ignorant about the blessing. The blessing through religious tradition has been relegated to a response to a sneeze. Huh? Bless you. God bless you. What does that mean? Is the person releasing any kind of faith or any kind of expectation? No, they're not. It's an empty 
traditional religious saying that means nothing and does nothing. And that should not be associated with something so mighty and powerful as the blessing of the Lord that has the power to make you into something you have not been. The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. Hmm? The blessing of the Lord, the NIV says, brings wealth. There are other scriptures that say the same thing. And he adds no sorrow with it. The Amplified says, the blessing of the Lord, it makes truly rich. He adds no sorrow with it, neither does toiling increase it. You cannot prosper yourself and, 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 and just by hard work. See, sometimes people say, well, that's, that's the thing. You know, if you'll just work hard, you'll be successful. There are many people who have worked hard their entire life and are still poor. That's right. That's right. That's right. Work multiple jobs. Mm-hmm. Your faith must not just be in what you can do. Your faith must not just be in hard work. That's a substitute for faith in God as your source and provider. Now, you're supposed to do some things. You are supposed to work. But actually, Ephesians says, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him work. Work with his hands the thing that's good that he may have to give. That's not working for a living. That's working for a giving. Huh? You can be so blessed. I hope you're, I hope you're awake. hope you're listening. You can be so blessed. You can get to the point you use all of your work income as seed. You're not living off your working. You're living off your harvest. Your working is getting your seed. Your working is your giving. You're living off your harvest. Which is multiplied what you sown. So that'll have people scratching their head how you live like you do on what you make. And of course, involved in that, you'll start making more too. That's part of the harvest. But uh, the blessing of the Lord makes rich. Go to Galatians, the third chapter. They'll put it on the screen for us. Galatians 3 and 8. The scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel. Somebody say the gospel. The gospel to Abraham, saying, in you shall all nations be blessed. Now, this is something largely missed by the organized church. When you hear gospel, you should immediately think blessing. (laughs) But how many do? The gospel was preached to Abraham centuries and centuries before Christ. And this tells us what he heard. What's the gospel that Abraham heard? In you shall all nations be blessed. What does that mean? It's talking about the seed of Abraham that the promise was to, which was Christ. And in Christ shall all nations be blessed. Not just saved from hell, but blessed. Oh, somebody say blessed. 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 Verse 9, so then they which be of faith. Now here it gets broad. Now you're not just talking about Jesus. But everybody who has faith. In Jesus, so then they which be of faith, raise your hand and say, that's me. That's me. Are what? Are blessed 
with faithful Abraham. Abraham had no blessing you don't have. And God made him rich. Very rich. Is that right? Am I making this up or am I reading scriptures? The, the gospel is blessing in Abraham, in Abraham's seed, in Christ, shall all nations, we might add that believe it and receive it, be blessed. And then they which are of faith then, who did receive it, who believe the gospel about blessing in Christ, they are blessed with faithful Abraham. Say that loud, I have faith in Christ. And I'm the seed of Abraham. And I am blessed with Abraham. I'm blessed. Man, it do you good to go around saying that. I'm blessed. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be blessed? Skip down to verse 13. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the what? The curse. The reason I'm not cursed is not because I've done everything right. It's because Jesus redeemed me from the curse. The same reason I'm blessed is Jesus. Is the reason I'm not cursed is Jesus. He was made a curse for us. That's why I'm not cursed. As it's written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. And he hung on the tree. Verse 14. <coughs> that are in order that. Right. What? The blessing. the blessing of Abraham might come on. Now just in case you weren't sure who he's talking about. Gentiles. <laughs> no covenant. No bodies. Which all of us were. Until. We received Jesus. Now we've been made. Made. The sons of God by faith in him. And that the blessing of Abraham might come on us through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Everybody say, I am blessed. I am blessed. I, am blessed. I, am blessed. I, am blessed. I want to give you three things that the blessing does. That the blessing is. Believe with me that I don't go too long. <laughs> Number one. Well, let, me, let me start by saying this. The blessing is power. The blessing is the power of God that can do anything. To say you are blessed is to say that you are empowered and enabled and favored. And the list goes on. But just those, those three are big. Right? Say it out loud. Empowered. Empowered. Enabled. Enabled. Favored. Favored. And this is not something you can do for yourself. This is something God did for you. This is, this is his hand on you. His spirit on you. His favor on you. His empowerment on you and in you. His enablement working in you and through you and for you. When you say, I'm blessed, you said a bunch. And why are you blessed? Not because you're so pretty. Huh? You're blessed. The reason you're not cursed is because Jesus took the curse in your place. And the reason you are blessed is so that, he said he took the curse so that the blessing could come on you. And by your faith in him, you are blessed with faithful Abraham. Number one, the blessing is the power to acquire. The power to get things. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, remember the Lord your God. It is he who gives you the power to get wealth or to produce wealth. Other translations, three other ones say the power to become rich. Rich is a relative term. It's not just a certain amount in your account. It's not having 12 lawsuits. It's not having to 
you know, go through divorce. It's not having to deal with a terminal disease. Huh? A big part of your prosperity is all the stuff you don't get stolen from. Right? Plus you have coming in everything you need and extra and ability to give. But the blessing empowers you to get, to acquire. Secondly, the blessing is the power to enjoy. Just because you got a lot of stuff doesn't mean you can enjoy it. Hmm. There are people who's got everything money can buy and are absolutely miserable. Sitting up in a you know, multi-million dollar home, a palatial place, suicidal. They, there are many people who thought getting all this stuff would make them happy. But then when they got it and it didn't, now they got nothing to look forward to because at least when they were broke, they could imagine that when they got it, they'd be happy. Now they got it. What do I look to now? That's because it never could make you happy to start with. The only thing that can make you happy and satisfied on the inside is God, your creator. That's the only thing. Doing his will is what will fulfill you and satisfy you. Nothing else can. But if you're doing that, you could actually enjoy a new house with the presence of God in there. Is that right? You can enjoy a new car, new suit, new clothes, new whatever. You can enjoy it if you're putting him first and he gave it to you. And you got it the right way. And the Bible said Ephesians 5, I've seen this. It's good for one to eat and drink and enjoy all the good of his labor that God gives him. Moreover, verse 19, God, when God gives anybody wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, this is the NIV, this is a gift of God. Enablement to enjoy. That's blessing. That's the gift of God. And then thirdly, Acts 20, 32. Acts 20, 32, he said, I commend you, brethren, to, to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. He said, uh, verse 35, I've shown you all things, how that you are to support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. The, the blessing empowers you to get. You can't give what you didn't get. You can't give what you didn't have. You can't enjoy what you don't have. So the, the blessing empowers you to acquire, to get. The, the blessing enables you to enjoy. But then the blessing, the, the greater blessing, the more blessed, enables you to enable others. Enabled you to be a vessel to give, yes. to be a conduit for God to answer prayers through. Yes. Huh? God to meet needs by your hand. Somebody say, it's blessed, it's blessed. to receive. receive. It's blessed, it's blessed. to enjoy. enjoy. It's more blessed, more blessed. to give. And that's what we've been talking about for years when we say, we're so blessed. The blessed people call us, we're talking about being more blessed. Which is talking about giving. Having the ability to give to others. To be used of God to help make their dreams come true. Help relieve them from need. Do you have any desire for this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the blessing. And if you have Markoffs on your list, that's why. You've been blessed. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes, if you got free from some things and you were able to do some things and you were able to receive some things and enjoy some things, help me out. It was the blessing of the Lord that makes, makes you prosper, wealthy, rich, 
And he adds, no, there's no downside to it. He adds no sorrow to it, right? There's no hidden pain that comes with it. It's just all good, all good. And so what we're talking about moving forward, if we want to do more for the kingdom, what will, what will that require? The blessing on us, right? On our seed sown and our work we do and the things we do so that it prospers and goes forward and increases and multiplies. And if we want to get free from debts and obligations, that'll require the blessing. Is that right? Enough favor or if debts are released, increase and harvest to pay them off, right? You won't be able to do that just on your own. That requires the blessing of the Lord, right? And then all these things that you might just like to have or do personally or do for other people, you're talking about blessing. 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 Bless going out. Bless coming in. Is that right? Yes. Blessed in your basket. Yes. Blessed in your store. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. you see why? I mean, the Bible's full of it. Yes. God has always been the God of blessing, the God of increase, the God of abundance. He is still today. He will always be. He will never change. Abundance yep. is his plan, is his will. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah.